It's time to fix Nigeria's politics. Well, for a while I've bemoaned the sorry state of governance in this nation. I've told the story of our national problems and challenges for weeks here. And just when you think you've seen it all, one wakes up to another foolish policy. How should one explain the decision to biometrically register about 50 million people in two weeks in the middle of a pandemic and over the holidays? <laughs> to paraphrase Nonso Obikili on Twitter, he says, and I quote, it's an act of economic self-sabotage and an attempt to destroy the telecom sector that has grown steadily in the last five years. Isn't this also a way to start the year in chaos? How do you do two weeks to biometrically, you know, register people? Well, today I'm sharing the story of a solution. One of the outstanding ones Nigerian citizens are coming up with in order to create a country worth living for themselves and their unborn. Former presidential candidate and co-convener, Bring Back Our Girls, Dr. Obi Izekwisili, launched Hashtag Fix Politics in November 2020. It parades many bright brains in Nigeria from all sectors. But you know what excites me most about the initiative is its school of politics, policy and governance in collaboration with Hertie School of Governance in Germany. This to me is critical to transforming the political ecosystem and governance at all levels in Nigeria. It's like saying enough is enough. If you want to have a stake, then come for knowledge. Now, the school is a world-class virtual academic education initiative. It offers the 21st century type disruptive thinking leadership program. It's looking to train 5,000 new political leaders in five years. The school is technologically enabled and promises a six-month, 70%, 30% mix of virtual and physical classroom curriculum. And I'm one of the pilot team. We've been receiving lectures you know, and sessions on a range of topics related to politics, I can tell you it's exciting. It's designed to transform the political system in Nigeria for good governance, for good. It answers the critical question on how to become 21st century politicians with character, competence, and capacity. It seeks to elevate the office of the citizen. Let me share my experience with you. Three quick takes. First, it offers an unconventional approach to learning about politics, policy, and governance. I mean, we learned how the, you know, the difference between the parliamentary and the presidential system and the functions of a party, a political party, and many more. Now, you can approach your career armed with strategy and a combination of street uh, wisdom and knowledge with formal knowledge in politics and policy making. It is analytically and empirically relevant to solving our peculiar complex development problems. Secondly, it prepares you to run for elective offices at state and federal levels in legislative and executive offices. So that starting from 2023, the electorate can have top quality choices of candidates. Thirdly, if you have a commitment to public service, this is a transformative opportunity. It seeks to equip you with intellectual and professional capability to solve critical po political policy and governance challenges facing Nigeria. If you seek and desire to be part of the solution, then join this team. We shouldn't be complaining all the time. Hashtag Fix Politics is an enabler to produce a new political leadership class and support individuals on their way to becoming political leaders, irrespective of their political parties. The first cohort will commence in January. Will I be there? Will you be there? It's time to actively fix Nigeria's politics. You know, it's funny how I never um, anticipated that I would become as political as I have become in the last um, seven years. Because as a journalist, all I wanted to do was report, present, and do my business on the side and just enjoy my life as a Nigerian. But when everything that happens in government and through governance, you know, enables your life, encourages good welfareism or inhibits your livelihood. You become an activist. 
And therefore, every Nigerian has to be actively involved in politics from doing our own parts as individuals. If you work in the public system or the private system, ensuring that you're not cheating the next person, you're not stealing from them. Because it's the um, microcosm of the bigger society that we are in terms of we are the ones who eventually become government. They don't come from Ghana or Togo. You know? So if we fix ourselves, we can then fix politics because then I'm not going to be going into political office to enrich myself and my family. It will be really to serve. But what we have now, and a lot of people say it's not our fault, is how Nigeria was amalgamated. It wasn't amalgamated to succeed. If that is true, we need to sit together and say, how do we move the country forward with yeah. all of us participating, not you and I deciding for everyone else. Right. Yes, I think this, this advocacy is very critical. Uh, critical in the sense that it, it is like the, the fulcrum of our social economic existence. And uh, it's one that every one of us, because every man is political. Politics is embedded in man uh, from creation. Mm -hmm. So it, it, we have come to a point where everyone must come up. Because if you look at what is happening, I am 40 years as I speak. I don't know what good governance is. I've never seen good governance since I was born. I shouldn't <laughs> die like this. No, I, 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 this is protest. This is protest. I, I, I don't know what good governance is. The only time I saw what we are, was when I read in government textbook that this is how a country should be managed and this is the kind of political system you should have. But I've never it. seen it before. It will, it so will, imagine it, dying it, like this. It will, it will <laughs> happen in this your lifetime. You know, uh, I, I like the structured approach that uh, Obi is putting into this uh, for people who are now showing interest to get more involved and understand that particular space. Because another thing that scares people away is the fact that they don't understand the space. And if you don't understand something, the tendency is to, to just see, hands off. Yeah. And we need to extend that even into, into the education space. I attended a secondary school where we have student representative council, mm. where they were, we appoint speakers, where our prefect campaign to be elected. There is a speech day. You know, so as a, as, a, as a Form 1 student, I was representing my Form 1 on that student representative council in secondary right. school. Yeah. Now, whatever took all of that away, I don't know. Yeah. And it's on to a federal so government let's, school. Let's take Ruk away. Yes. Well, I went to federal government school because I recognize what you're saying. But the truth is, everything starts with education. When you put the right seeds inside the minds of a child, they will, they will grow very good products. So it's very, really obvious to me that we really haven't gotten it right from inception. Our, our school system is, is really not adequate at the moment, where the public sector, um, public schools, if you will, are not properly funded. So people send their children to private schools and whatever agenda it is. We, we had this amalgamation she talked about well, everybody in Nigeria came to those schools. They put quarters for the north and the east and all that with the quarters for the north um, being lower. But we learned to leave, leave as brothers. Even some of my closest friends today are we from learn, the north and have never been to the north. Yeah, Rukia, we will learn to live as brothers. That will be your yeah. punchline uh, as we move on. Right. <laughs> we, we did, we did. And the truth is, we, we're not really living like that now. There's so many interests, there's so much divide, be it um, religion, um, be it um, tribalism, all you know, right. and all sorts of divide. And so we're not acting in, in love anymore. Well, our advocacy will be incomplete without your contributions as we read through your comments on our social media platforms. Demila De Alamudu says on our last advocacy nigerians need reorientation of mindset for nation building starting from our primary education family units and from grassroots and we nigerian citizens legislative judiciary and executive arms of government must agree to put in effective systems of government and policies that can build a nation regardless of political parties also julius Owoye says ask yourself how many languages in europe and how many countries in europe that is what should be as well applicable in order to solve Nigeria's endemic problems from its inception. We thank you, Temila Dialamudu and Julius Owe for your comments. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook plus TV Africa 
hashtag the advocate saying G, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate saying G. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com um, slash the advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Evans is back from his visit to Rabai. He's advocating for the protection of the Nigerian woman. Evans had better get this right. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.